Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to crochet this woven scarf which is super duper simple with just a one row pattern repeat so it works up very quickly and gives this absolutely beautiful slightly different effect for your crochet work. If this is your first visit to my channel, it would be amazing if you just took a moment to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future crochet videos. Now I'm gonna to touch really briefly on this scarf I have already made and give you a tiny bit of information about the yarn, how much I used, etc., and all that sort of stuff because we all love those kind of details. If you have no interest in this particular scarf I've made and you just want to learn how to do this pattern, then use the timestamp in the description box below to leap straight to the beginning of this tutorial. Now the scarf on the table at the moment is about five foot long. I've got it sort of folded over double here. You can see it's completely reversible and it is totally, totally customizable. You can use whatever yarn, you like whatever hook size you like you are free to go mad with your color choices it would look particularly good in a solid yarn too so don't feel it's a variegated only project now my big old scarf here let me just fold it up a little bit because it's getting a bit carried away <laughs> it's everywhere on the table oh <laughs> i'm just going to fold this up and move it to one side now this pattern is very very economical with the yarn itself so for my five foot long scarf, I didn't even finish the ball of Hayfield Spirit double knit in the colorway sundown. This is how much I have left over from making this scarf. For the contrasting color, this white here, I used Signet Chunky in white. And again, this is how much I have left over from a ball of yarn. So there is enough here to have taken this a bit longer if I wanted to. Obviously, if you're going to do your scarf wider and longer, you'll need a little bit more yarn, but I just wanted to show you exactly how much I had left over, so you've got a good idea of how much yarn this really doesn't take. So it's very economical with the yarn. Great if you've only got a couple of balls and you need to make a gift or you just want to make a scarf for yourself, this is the perfect pattern for you. Now I have listed all the details for this scarf, the width, how much I chained, all that jazz is down in the description box below. So don't forget to expand that box where you'll find all the information for this scarf itself. So let's leap straight on in to how you crochet the woven scarf. For this pattern, you need two things. First off, you need two separate colors. One, you need to be your main color, which is my variegated yarn here in the background. And you therefore need the hook size that your yarn recommends. For this Hayfield Spirit, it tells me I need a four millimeter hook because it's double knitting. So that's what I'm going to use. For your contrast color that you run through at the end, what you want is a large eye needle. Now these sort of children's plastic safety needles are perfect for this. If you haven't got one of these, don't worry, just a blunt needle is ideally what you need. Now for your contrast color, you don't really need to worry about weight or whether it matches. I've actually used a chunky yarn here, which has, would be a completely different hook size, but you don't need to worry about that. Only thing you need to pay attention to is what hook size for your main background color. So for me, the variegated. So I'm going to use my leftovers to make up a really tiny little sample so I can show you exactly how this scarf was made. So the pattern multiple for your crochet woven scarf is two plus six. Now what that means is you will chain in sets of two for as wide as you want your project to be. Then when you've got the desired width, add six more chains at the end. Now, because I am just making a tiny sample to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and pop a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain 14, which is my multiple of two. And now I have my 14 chains, which is my multiple of two. I'm going to add six more chains at the end. So once you have the correct amount of chains, we can start our setup row. 
So you're going to skip the first five chains. Now this loop on your hook does not count as anything. You want to only be counting these fully completed chains at the bottom. So count back five. And then we're going to be working into this sixth chain here. So skip the first five chains and place a double crochet into that sixth chain where I've got my thumb. Chain one, skip a chain, place a double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip a chain, double crochet in the next. And you're going to continue this all the way down your chain. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So you should end with a double crochet in that very last chain by your slip knot. And now you're ready to begin row two. So row two is the pattern repeat row, which means the row we're about to do is the row you will do for the entirety of your project, so for the full length. So to begin row two, you're going to chain three. and turn. Now place a double crochet in the very top of your double crochet from the row below. So skip that chain one space and work a double crochet into the top of that double crochet stitch. Chain one, skip the chain one space and place a double crochet into the top of the next double crochet. Repeat this all the way down, chain one, skip the space, double crochet into the top of the double crochet stitch from the row below. When you get to the end and you've got your sort of turning chain here, chain one, miss the very first chain, the chain closest to that stitch and work into the second one here, just next to it. That will keep your edges nice and straight all the way up. I'll show you row two one more time. So chain three, turn, Double crochet in the top of the double crochet stitch from the row below. Chain one, double crochet into the top of the double crochet. Chain one, and keep working your way across. Once you've done your final double crochet into the top of the very last double crochet, Chain one, and double crochet into the second chain. So because it's now a chain three, it's literally just aim for that middle chain of your three. So keep repeating that for the entire length of your scarf. I'm gonna go ahead and crochet up a few more rows and then I can show you how to do the woven section. Once you have finished the very final stitch and you've reached the desired length that you want for your scarf, chain one, snip your yarn, leaving a decent tail length to weave in, pull that through, pull it tight 
and then you can either weave in your ends now or you can weave them in at the very very last weave them in at the end <laughs> so grab your contrasting yarn that you're going to weave through grab your large eye needle and some scissors and we can do the fun bit all right, so I've switched out the backgrounds just so you can see this a little bit more clearly because I'm working with white. Once you have your scarf completed, grab your contrast yarn. And the way to work out how long a length you need is what you want is the length of the scarf itself. You want to add some allowance for fringing at either side. Hopefully this is all staying in shot to about here. And then you want to leave yourself a little bit extra just for <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> so for whatever the length of your scarf, I'm going to say at about there. So I'm just going to snip myself off a strand. That should be more than plenty. So if I hold it out, it's the width of my scarf plus some length for tassels plus a bit of wriggle room there. So you want to decide how many strands you have running through each section of your scarf. Now for my one that I showed you in the intro, I had two. So the quickest way to make sure they're the same length is hold them together, pull them out, and snip. So that'll be the first row. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut myself some more strands so I know I have the exact amount of yarn that I'm going to need. If you want, once you have your first two done, you can just have it as one long length if that is easier. Whatever works best for you. So you can either have two separate strands, like so, or you can have one long one doubled over like that. Totally personal preference. I'm going to go ahead with this because it's quicker. So these are my double length strands and these are my cut individual length strands. So totally personal choice, whichever works fastest for you. So now I have all these prepped. I'm going to zoom back in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Grab your large eye needle and the fun of weaving can begin. So I'm going to thread these two individual strands. These are the short length ones I cut onto my large eye needle. Now put your large eye needle in that first chain one space and come up behind, go over and under. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going over and under. So over that next chain space, under the following one. If I pull this through, it might be easier for you to see. So over and come back under, over, under. And then you can take your needle off. Now, the one thing you want to watch for, especially when working on a long, long scarf, is puckering. So make sure that you're not pulling so tightly that it puckers. You can stretch this back out again so that it's sitting nice and flat. Grab your next strand. Now, I've got one of the double length ones next. So the way we tackle that one is I just pop one thread through my needle. Hold the tail ends together, draw my needle through so it's like one long length. Now, whichever way you went in on this first one, we're going to do the opposite for this next one. So I went over that first one, so I'm going to come up and I'm going to go over that one and under that one. So we're doing the exact opposite of what you did So 
So a good way to tell is if your yarn tails are lying over the top of that final row, you want them to be coming out underneath on the next one. So again, pull it through. You want everything to be, you don't need to be too perfect. And then free your needle. And we're simply going to repeat this for all long sections of your scarf. So the reverse again, so now it'll be over, under, over, under. So I came underneath for this one, so now I'm going to go over for the next. So just repeat this over, under, over, under, alternating which way you go for the full width of your scarf. Be careful it doesn't all pucker up. So you can see like this is all starting to pucker. Smooth it all out. And keep going. So I'm going to carry on and do the rest of this tiny little sample and then I will show you how to finish off. So that is my final strand pulled through. Now, as you can see, there's quite a lot of bowing and whatnot. So this is the point to flatten out the entire thing. You can be pretty rough with it because you absolutely do not want the crochet fabric underneath to pucker. So for my full length scarf, I folded it in the middle and I smoothed it the whole thing out. This is also the chance to make sure that you have enough sort of length and you haven't left any too short on either end for doing your little tassels. So once you're happy, spin it around so you've got one of the bottom edges looking at you and you want to count how many of these double strands you have coming through and separate them out. This is great for just working out where you're going to place your knots, depending on how many sort of, of these gaps you have. On my scarf, I had an odd number, which made it a bit of a pain. I didn't do the maths in advance for actually tying these up. Let me just get that tail out of the way because that should be woven in. But for this little sample, I actually have an even number. I'll show you in a second how I divvied up my odd number ones but I just want to show you the technique here now so you know what I'm talking about when I show you the finished scarf. Evenly section these off. You want at least two strands together. You can do more but you can't do less so we need two strands at least to be parented up and when I say strands I mean these sort of lengths here so technically it's four strands for me. But hopefully you are keeping up with what I mean. You want two of these woven sections together. So once you've divvied it all up evenly, we're going to knot this bottom end. Now be gentle because you don't want to pull through your strands from the other end. So I'm just going to do just an overhand knot. You can tie these however you want. Oops, <laughs> she says, instantly messing up, bear with me. So I've just wrapped it around my finger and I'm just pushing them all through here. I feel rather, it's easier to do on your lap <laughs> than on a table. So I'm just making like a sort of a very loose knot. You can even these up afterwards, so you don't need to worry too much about it, but you want to have secured two, at least two of these woven sections together and then keep going just knotting however you have divvied them up i fear i'm making this sound more complicated than it is all right so i have secured these guys all together. Now you can take a moment to neaten up your knots. Obviously, I don't know why I feel the urge to eat, neaten up these knots on this tiny little sample piece that isn't gonna be used for anything, but there you go. Sort out your knots, get them all in line, 
make sure you're happy with them. The main thing is that you want to have secured two, at least two of these together. Now, if you have an odd number of sort of legs coming down, I'll show you how I dealt with my actual scarf. So just for two seconds, I'm just going to move this to one side. So for my scarf, I had an odd number. So what I did was I divvied it all out and I did one side, then the next, tying two together, two together, working my way towards the middle. And then that very last one, you can see I actually have three tied together. Now you don't really notice, and by working from the outside in, it means that it looks intentional if you do spot it. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it's not like I've got two all the way along and then randomly three chunked together over here. I've put it in the middle so that that is a way to make it look deliberate. Just work out how many you want to tie together. As long as you are tying at least two, that is the important bit. It actually looks quite pretty tying three together. However, I think I've got 19 here and that wasn't divisible by three. I had to do some maths, it was very boring. Anyway. You've tied your knots on one end. This is the last chance to smooth out anything that may have puckered whilst you were tying knots at this end. Smooth it all out and repeat the exact same process at the other end of your scarf. It might be worth, if you've got a heavy book or something you can place on this to stop it moving around, that you may find that works a bit easier for you. But I'm just gonna go ahead and struggle <laughs> on camera. All right, that's my last knot tied, my ugly big old knots. Obviously you take the time to secure them down nicely and sort out any loose little strands. You can pull them through by finding, there we go, that was this one here. So once you're happy, everything is lying nice and flat. It's completely reversible front and back. The last thing to do is trim up your fringing so that everything is the same length. Please take more time than I currently am. <laughs> I'm more hacking at this poor thing rather than trimming it neatly. Weave in any of these final little straggly ends if you haven't already done so. And that's it. You are done. You have created yourself a very squishy, very yarn economical very interesting looking crochet woven scarf. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't already, it would be amazing if you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And let me know in the comments down below, is this something that you're going to make? Tell me, what do you think of this sort of crochet woven mashup for a scarf. I love getting your comments. I always try and do my best to read every single one of them. So please do let me know in the comment down below what you think. Or alternatively, give this video a thumbs up because then I know I am on the right lines with the sort of content that I'm producing for you all. So until next time, happy crocheting.